Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Stephanie Anderson. I'm chair of the Ordinance Committee, and I'm calling the meeting to order. And we have a quorum because we have two people. Councillor Harriman is here, and um, Councillor Thompson is away. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. And I want to thank, I see several public members here. I want to thank you for coming. Um, I was uh, happy that we had this meeting today because I have two hours where my hands can get warm and <laughs> I can, you know, plug in uh, over here and whatever. So uh, the first item on the agenda is the minutes of the March 6th meeting. Can I have a motion on those? Motion to approve. I second. All in favor? Okay. Um, there is an opportunity for public comment for items that are not on the agenda. Um, and so does anyone have a public comment that does not relate to Dyer Road parking, ADUs, or pesticide ordinance? Okay, I'm seeing none and hearing none. So uh, we're going to go to the Dyer Road parking restrictions, and I just want to tee this up uh, very briefly. Uh, we had um, some citizens very concerned about what they felt were dangerous um, parking conditions on Dyer Road. Uh, there is access to one of the um, uh, conservation um, trails there. And so uh, I went and took a look at it and I asked our public works director uh, to take a look at it to see if we could come up with a solution that would be uh, easy and inexpensive and would actually get cars off the road as opposed to parking along the side of the road. So um, Jay is here to tell us what he found. Great, thank you. Uh, Jay Reynolds, Public Works Director. Uh, so as mentioned, we met out there, uh, met with a resident that was uh, next door to the Green Bell Trail access point. And uh, after sort of surveying the area, uh, doing a little research afterwards, uh, put together this um, conceptual sketch plan uh, based on our meeting and discussions. Um, first thing I found at uh, Dyer Pond Road has a 50 foot wide right of way. Um, so roughly speaking, where the arrow is pointing to that very um, uh, dashed line that is tough to see in yellow, but I couldn't figure out a good color to put on there, um, is approximately where the edge of the public right of way ends. And, and heads along Dyer Pond Road, exactly. <clears throat> so that's looking um, eastward, uh, back towards Shore Road. And you can see the Green Belt Trail head to the left where the sign is <laughs> off the screen there. And um, what we found is that there's sufficient width and uh, sufficient length to install up to five nine by 18 parking spaces. Before you get to the guardrail uh, where the stream or pond is, uh, closer to Shore Road and where you get to the access to the trailhead is. Um, so that's about as far as I took it, as far as um, layout and design, but I think just for the purpose of tonight was just to show that it is feasible uh, to get up to five spaces in that area that's uh, hashed in yellow. Okay, and um, does that involve blasting any rock or anything like that? There is one space and it's about where the snow is far off in the distance at the very end where there's a ledge outcrop and that is less than nine feet in width from that ledge to the edge of pavement so there would be um, a small area of ledge removal which we'd be able to um, not blast but use a, a hammer drill basically to remove a, a small piece of the ledge so it's not um, insurmountable as far as uh, construction goes. Um, is this work that is this work that your crew can do, or would you have to contract this out? I think, as I laid out with just that ledge piece, and if we kept the surface a um, a material that will allow drainage to still uh, make its way off the edge of the roadway, um, that we could do that in house at a relatively low price, just the cost of materials, basically. So look, I don't have any idea what that would be. Would that be? Ten thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. It would be more in the fifteen hundred range for materials to, to build that up. 
if we were to do it with crushed stone, which would allow the drainage to still work its way to the uh, ditch line along the right of way line. Um, and so this would get the parking access to the Green Belt Trail completely off Dyer Road. Yes, it would be all off the off the paved edge, the paved driveway of Dyer Pond Road. Yes. Any questions, Caitlin? No, you asked a lot of good ones. That was very I, I, I think that this is a I very. Well, my, yeah, I'll, I think I make a motion to send it to the council to approve for Jay to move forward. Like, if you wanted to second that. <laughs> Maureen. Maureen's like, no. Maureen's going to tell us something. We're going to get some direction here, I think. Well, if all you want to do is create off off street parking, that can go straight to the council. Mm -hmm. But if you also want to prohibit parking everywhere else, that's a traffic ordinance amendment. Let's do that. Well, I think you start by sending this to the council and we can continue to work on the ordinance changes. We can bifurcate. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. I think I think it's a really elegant solution. I so, did you second? I did. Oh, thank you. And then we're all voting. Yeah. So then we'll. Is he talking about public comment on this? Yes. Did I comment on that? Yes, you may. Okay, my name is Susan Clough, and just uh, for semantics, it's Dyer Pond Road in the agenda, not Dyer Road. Um, Mr. Reynolds has diet pond on this, but the agenda says diet. Or there are a couple of different diet. <laughs> okay, thank you. I live on diet pond road. I live at the very end of Love and Diet Pond Road. Yeah, my name is Susan Clark. At the end of um, Mr. Reynolds' picture, uh, where he said the guy real is, that's a blind corner. And at this end of the picture is the other end of the blind corner. So the issue that we're having on the road is. Because they're parking on a blind corner and it's a hill, when you're coming down the hill or you're know, turning into Dyer Pond Road, which is right beyond the first parking space, you're turning a blind corner and there's a car park there. And even if they're off the road, it's a dead end road. There's no public turnaround at the end of the road, which means they're doing a three or four or five point turn on a blind corner when they try to leave there. Or, they're turning around at the end of the dead end road, which is my driveway. I just sent pictures today of the damage that was done to my lawn. Did you send them to? Yep, yeah, to the audience committee. Um, I apologize if I didn't No, that's okay, it was late. I just got my power back on. <laughs> you have your Lucky power? you. Wait, you have your power back on? <laughs> just, and you too, Mary? It just came on a couple hours ago, right? Yeah. Sure. yeah. So we, um, because there is a small town turnaround at the end of the road, but it looks like a driveway, no one utilizes it. They use my driveway. And not only do they come and turn, mm -hmm. destroy my lawn, we spent $20,000 for a new, live, um, new driveway. We kept it cordoned off for almost two months. The day we took it off, someone came in, broke down the edges, destroyed the lawn, and um, it's constant. If they don't turn right there, they come all the way down, and that driveway is probably um, 1,500 feet long. Okay, they look, come down, and they do a huge loop, full speed. What? Look, can I? I want to ask you a question. Sure. What's the option other so, than denying public access? We don't want to deny public access. Certainly, at the end of any public road, what we've learned is. There is no parking at the end of any public road, so there's a no parking sign in there. Um, I sent pictures of people parking under the no parking sign every single day, every you know, all the time. The police departments were incredibly good. They come out, they'll they'll take it, but we don't need to waste some time doing that, really. Um, so no matter what you do with spots and signs, it, it's a, it's a problem. You know, and I've said to people at the end of our road, it says no parking. If you park off the road on the grass, you're fine. I mean, I even direct people to where they can safely park and not get ticketed. Um, the issue with this is the blind corner at the end of the road. If you go past that first driveway, there's a long straightaway. Yeah. Where if people parked on that straightaway, there's no blind 
curves, and so it would be safer on the straightaways. Um, the only issue that is still in place is they're using our driveways to turn around because it's a dead end road. It's only a third of a mile long. So if we can't expand some sort of turnaround at the end of the road, that's the issue. I, I don't care if they park there, and I, I don't, if they get a three-point turn on a straightaway where they're not going to get hit, that's one thing. But how do we ensure that the neighbor's yards aren't being used as Well, I think, I think by providing some off-road parking, we're helping to ensure that the neighbor's yards don't get used. How do they turn around? What kind of parking is it going to be, Jay? Parallel parking or perpendicular? Parallel to the roadway. And that's a good question because if it were perpendicular, <coughs> then they would pull it in back. Right. Well, so they had back out there because it's a blind curve at the bottom of the hill. It's dangerous. Can they do? Can they turn at the sort of at the trailhead, like right in in the foreground of this photograph? If that's the, that's the start of the blind curve down at the bottom of the hill. But then that's just, that's where the trail goes in too. Mm -hmm. I I went twice to do a site visit, and so. I looked in the area to see if there was a space where we could accommodate some off Dyer Pond Road parking, and I thought that was the only area. Well, if you come back to the road, come to the top of the road and go down the hill, and picture a car at this spot across the road, when you're coming down that hill on the tur turn. That's why I'm saying the straightaway, it's not on a blind curve. I, this I, is two blind curves, one entering the road and one coming down the road where those five parking spots are. I did picture cars there, and I thought it was okay. <clears throat> Jay? The other thing we can do from a traffic engineering perspective is there are standards for sight distances and blind curves. Um, so if you get a traffic engineer, they will tell you at, at a 35, 30 mile an hour road is supposed to have X feet of visibility. These are in our site plan standards. You probably know them by heart. Uh, but that might be something that this we could block off the visibility, simulating a couple spaces there, and check the site distance on both the curves to see if it meets or if it does not meet that. It's going to exceed it. Exceed. Meters. It is going to exceed because this is a relatively new road built under new standards, and then we went and revised our road standards to make them more of a neighborhood road. So we actually re reduced sight distance. So this is going to meet the sight distance standards and then some. With the parking, just to verify the parking. If all you're doing is looking at horizontal and vertical alignment, it's going to meet it. Would you consider the straightaway instead? Mm -hmm. Where I, you know, it, I think that the, the police department has agreed that that's a safety issue. On that it's road. a safety issue when they're parked on the road, and the reason <clears throat> why I wanted to get them off the road was it's not the safety. It's easy. not when they're parked there. It's when they're doing a three-point turn. There. They're trying to get out of there. So we need to, to devise a better way for people to get out and not be doing that turn on a blind curve. The straightaway, I believe, I looked at it, it, I think it would have involved some tree removal. It didn't have the, it, it didn't seem to have the. No, there's no trees on the straightaway on the right hand side. Um, they brought in some fill rock and then it does go into a um, drainage. But if there's enough room, um, to build there, they don't have. There's no trees there on that straightaway. It's probably 200 yards long. You still have the same 50 foot right away on a straightaway. Yeah, the right away is 50 feet all the way to the turnaround at the end. <clears throat> all the way to the turnaround at the end. That's not a turnaround. Correct. That, I just want to. I want to know if it is a turnaround at the end or if it 
is it a legal turnaround? Because there has to be a turnaround for a fire truck. Yeah, we it's have a legal we turnaround. Have a public so it uh, is, but even the public works does not use it. I have pictures of the damage the public works did to my driveway this weekend because they don't use the public turnaround in my yard. So will we have a 50 foot right away to the end of that road to the turnaround? So are we using all 50 feet at the end for the turnaround? I would have to take a closer look at the turnaround. Because do we need to then create a better turnaround that's 50 feet at the end, which might then end up taking someone's lawn, <clears throat> or someone who thinks that's the end of their lawn. Yeah. That's not really. So is it but possible not, when you're complaining about your lawn, they're still within their 50 foot turnaround, the 50 foot right away? No, not where, the, not where the damage was done on Sunday morning by the public works, and not where the damage was done by the truck that did, broke my driveway. And at the end of the road where the grass is where it is a 50 foot um, right. right away is where I direct people to park. And I just park on the grass there, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Just don't park at the end of the road and block my driveway. And, it, and also, the, 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 my last issue with it at the bottom of the road where the truck is, is it's going to sound strange, but there's nesting, um, it's not in turtles. They've been nesting there for decades. And if you know anything about the environment, turtles and the salamanders will nest in the same spots for decades. It's at the bottom of the road. On that straightaway, there's only snakes, and I don't like snakes, so I'm good with the part of that. <laughs> Where, which of these driveways is yours? Um, so that one right there. The road dead ends into my driveway, and just uh, and they're coming into your driveway all the way into, of my, all way into, into the right. You see how long my driveway is? Right. Because they don't know that the road ends. Right. They just keep going. Right. It's, in, it's in, obvious it's a driveway. But what they don't know is that this driveway is actually the turn around. Yes. So is there a sign that says to turn around here? Mm -hmm. Could we get some kind of sign and arrows and maybe put some arrows on the ground? So here's the issue is that turnaround, like you say, that 50 feet would come all the way towards my driveway. And that's where I tell people to park. And when you park on the grass, just keep off the pavement and you won't get a ticket. But there is a, the utilities box for that home is in the grass area. In the right of way? Uh, to, the, to the left of the right of way as you're facing it. So if you wanted to expand that turnaround, there is a uti huge utility. Well, there shouldn't be a utility box in the right of way. I don't, I don't know. If there is, then we're about to make somebody unhappy potentially by trying to move their utility box. Like, so there's, there's some options down there, correct? They could get some signage. We could see if we can make a bigger turnaround. Like, what? I don't see... We have a landscape to the road, but, but where that turnaround is, they have landscaped right to the turnaround, so they're probably not going to have to expand it, but I don't to the road because I know it does come in right. my driveway about 15 feet. Where's the trailhead? It's, it's right yeah. here. This is the trailhead at the end of the road. The people are parking <laughs> way up at the curb? No, they're... They when they're there. using this, they're parking here and here. And then the other trailhead. Yeah, there's two trailheads. That's <clears throat> what I was confused at. So the picture taken is from the one next to the children. That one. So yeah. where's the parking spaces going? Next to that one, right? They would go right here. Yeah, that's right in that curve. Oh. And that's what we're concerned about is the curve. Right, well, that's why I was confused. You're saying the trailhead's way down. There's two. Right. Can you uh, move the screen? This so when I was see the long straightaways, I was asking if we can go along the straightaways so that if they do turn around in three point turn, everybody can see them from a good hundred yards in the direction. And it's, it's easier to turn there. Yeah. So you're suggesting moving this idea up the road, up the street. Well, just to get it away from that curve. That's the issue is the curve. Well, so I, we don't, I, I don't care if people park there. I have met so many nice people that use the trails. Um, I mean, there's groups of bikers that know where to get the compressor in my barn to go there for tires. I'm, I'm, I give people rides when they're lost back to the car with your dog. I'm, I'm, Fully in support of access to the trails. We're just trying to mitigate 
the traffic issues that have increased substantially because when they instituted the parking piece at the park, they're parking there. Yesterday, when the office of um, Benton was putting a ticket on someone's car that was blocking my driveway and there was no parking sign, um, <laughs> and the dog walker, the two cars that were parked there, both peoples came from up the road. They were not using the trails, they were using the road. Uh, so they're parking there. <clears throat> I, and I say to them, you don't have to be at the park this time of year. But they don't know that. There's no big signage at the park that says free parking in winter. There's no signage at the park that says free parking year round okay. if you park over here. So putting the five spaces up at the first trailhead isn't going to solve our parking problem down at the second trailhead. Correct. So I guess I would rescind my motion to send this back to the council and ask Jay to give me a new report on whether or not we can put parking spaces in that straightaway and then we would have to put no parking signs everywhere else but then the neighborhood's going to have to have there are going to be no parking signs for the whole neighborhood that would be for your friends coming over though looking at most of these driveways that really shouldn't be a problem um but I like the solution of getting the parking off the road. Right, that's why I'm wondering if what she's saying yeah. can happen by putting it, if you put it down that straightaway, then it's kind of like equal distance to both trailheads. So you're gonna, they're going to have to walk along the street either way to get back to whichever one they want to go to. So could you do that, Jay? I can, yeah. I, off memory, I don't remember. We, I know we looked at the gentleman's driveway that we met with out there, which is right at the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. and. I just vaguely remember there was drainage yeah. going under there and it was looked a little wetter and the shoulder looked a lot softer and less wide. But if you so it's um, it may be a different different right. project we'll altogether. We'll know all of our options. Sure. Even if, and unfortunately, even if you do all that work for me, like I ask, and then we just end up back at the first option. Sure. But this way we can at least say Scope it. we we considered we it. We considered it, did our due diligence and we know all of our options. And then we can move forward from there. Okay. But this, uh, in the meantime, as well, can we think of something for the turnaround signage? Sure. What we could work on to get that a little more obvious. Sure. Okay. You would accommodate far more spaces. We'll find out. It depends safe. on. It depends on much more than what the the common eye is looking at. So that's why we're going to ask Jay to take a look at it. All right. So I'm going to close that part of the meeting then. Jay, thank you very much. You're welcome. And table it. <clears throat> we're tabling it, for yes. The next meeting. Yeah, for the next meeting. And I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the agenda out of order and go to the pesticide ordinance amendment because I know that I see people here that thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. I see people here that are interested in that. And we only have Councillor Harriman for another 40 minutes, so. All right, I'll open it for public comment on the pesticide ordinance amendments. Mary Ann Lynch, 2 Old Colony Lane, and I will just say I trust that you received the letter that I sent to the council last week on this issue. Yes. So I won't waste your time with speaking further. Do you have anything else you want? Anything else you want to add to that? Do you want to summarize? Well, something? I'd like to um, let me read it then. I'll just read it. Okay. I have to find it. I'm sorry. Here we go. If you want me to read it. I got it. The tra draft pesticide ordinance has been posted on the town's webpage. The ordinance. I. Okay. The ordinance committee will meet Monday afternoon. The only properties in town that this ordinance applies to are residential properties. 
Pesticides can be applied to farms and the food we eat, to the schools and town playing fields where the kids play, to Fort Williams where we host thousands of visitors and dogs. Every single property in town except residential is exempt. I understand this was passed by referendum, but there was no real attempt to educate the voters. If pesticide applications are safe for application on farms, Fort Williams, with the most visited lighthouse in the country, and the school's playing fields, why are they not safe for lawns? I urge the town council to suspend or repeal this poorly thought out ordinance. My reputable grub control service has already canceled all of their service contracts in the entire town for the season. As they told us, there is no effective grub control application that is permitted under the ordinance. What will happen, in my opinion, is that people will go to Lowe's, they will buy what they need, and they will apply it themselves. This is far less safe than having educated, licensed applicators doing business in town. I know this was passed by the voters, but by and large, people did not know what they were voting on. Please suspend the application. If two of the larger landowners in town who are on the council are exempt and town and school properties are exempt, more thought and analysis should go into this issue and its impact on the rest of us. I have lost a lawn once to grubs. I don't want that to happen again. Thank you for your attention and service to the town. So my request to you today is to have the council suspend this ordinance for another year and do additional work on it so you can come up with an ordinance that is fair to all landowners in town. Fair and safe. But it is it's just shocking to me <laughs> that it, it applies to only residential and excludes everyone else, including the town. Now I understand the town has some um, management policies, but perhaps that's what should be substituted for this ordinance. So there you have it. That's my concern. And I did post something on the pod, and I can tell you that there seemed to be a lot of support for my position. I voted against it, by the way, but I have a policy of voting against citizen referenda because they are rarely well thought out. And uh, and a result of people on all sides getting into a room and coming up with reasonable, moderate solutions. Thank you. What would you what what would you like to see in terms of the control of grubs? That because that's the one. You know thing what? I to don't do. know, Councillor Anderson. I, as I said, I voted against this. I got a call from Egbert, our contractor, last Monday. They said they were contract canceling every single service contract that they have in the town of Cape Elizabeth because they cannot effectively control grubs. I don't have the answer. I'm not an expert. That's why I'm asking you to suspend it for a year and work on it and come up with an answer. I don't really care about weeds. It's not Darien, Connecticut but I care a great deal about grubs. And someone said to me, well, then just get chicken. Well, honestly, I'm not looking for chicken guano on my lawn, so. Plus, I have lots of them, and they can do more damage. I know, I know. I know. So I, I, I don't know the answer. For me, the answer would be to suspend Applic suspend the ordinance for a year and put a committee together and come up with something that makes sense for all landowners. I did think it's really, really unfair that many, land many larger landowners are exempt and small homeowners are not. And I think you're going to create a situation where you will make people in town violate the ordinance. They don't want to do that. But I don't think you want to make people be lawbreakers. But there's nothing to stop me from going to Lowe's other than the fact that I'm a good citizen and I won't. I'll end up with a grub-infested lawn. But there are going to be a lot of people that are just going to go to Lowe's and get the stuff that they need to, to do what they need on their lawns. So we've spent a long time on this ordinance. 
in the ordinance committee, and I totally hear what you're saying, and and my my thought on the best way to move forward would be to send this to the town council for the town council to discuss and set a public hearing so that we can do just what you're saying is hear from the public because that's until we set a public hearing this we're, we're not going to really get work like you just came into this because you got a phone call right yeah so now we you know we need to hear from everybody who's suddenly now becoming aware of it and the best way to make that even more aware is to set a public hearing right that's how the process is supposed to work right and i don't necessarily agree with you 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 just think we should just kill it before we hear from everybody else. No, oh no. But that's I kind didn't of what say you no. said. I did not say postpone kill. it for a year. I said postpone it for a year. To work on more, but we've already worked yes. on it for a year. Well, yeah. a lot of people did not were not we're aware of it. Paying attention, exactly. That's my and, point. Okay, I was paying attention. I actually came to the council last year when Richard Bryant brought the mm -hmm. petition. I testified against it. It passed. As I knew it would, because you know who's going to vote against sliced right. bread and children and motherhood, and so I knew it was going to pass. I was hoping that Egbert, my contractor, would be able to do work within the confines of the ordinance, but they've just said no. We can't do it. There's nothing effective. So, so if you go back and ask them what would be effective, what, what would need to be changed? You know what, they've just said, we cannot, they, they said, there is nothing that is effective allowed under the ordinance for grubs, and so we're not going to work in capable of it. And so, you're talking about the ordinances in, in effect, not the proposed ordinance. I'm talking about what is, what I guess is in effect now, which was what was adopted. Yeah. The proposed ordinance doesn't look much different. Yeah. It's not going. It's not going to. It's not going to change, not gonna gonna change it. So no, I'm not proposing you do nothing. I'm actually proposing that you do more hard work. Well, but they, that's my point is that we've already spent a long time yeah. working on it and modifying it. And so I'm saying if 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 what we've done for the last year hasn't gotten the result that that you think we need to spend more time to get, then we need to take it to the next level to try and get that result if it's out there to be had, right? Because just having more of these meetings where the same four people show up and talk about it and then isn't going to help us for another year, right? Well, so, I mean, I defer to you, I don't... That's what I'm saying, it's like the best way to do is to put it out there and make people, so you can go out and you can hit on the pod more and you can let everybody know, hey, this is really happening now. Get your butts in the chairs, talk about it, send emails because all we're hearing is the same information from the same people. And so until more people start voicing their opinions, then that's what, you know, the vote is the vote, and that's what we hear, and we move forward. So, Well, I guess I would have to ask you, why is it that there are major exemptions? Why are farms exempt? Why have you chosen to exempt the playing fields? I'm not asking you, I'm asking... Mm -hmm. The council, because they're the ones who have worked on this for. And he wrote it, so. Well, okay, here you go. I. Yeah. So, like, yeah, you I, start I, with why it's the way I, it is. I and then, to know. And then, then we kept, we we tried to keep it as, as, as it was, as best we could, without making it more restrictive than it needed to be. So, like, why would we, but why would we take, as a town, why would we take what they had written and then let's just make it more restrictive. If you people couldn't don't want make it, it more restrictive. We couldn't? You couldn't now, no. Why couldn't we? Could. You Absolutely. totally could. We could ban them. Could. You could totally make it more restrictive. Well, why don't you then? Because we don't want to. No. So we're stuck we're stuck doing what you, and the there, people, voted there, for. There you have there you have the essence of how absolutely unfair it is. Exactly, except the public the voting taxpayers. In Those this town, taxpayers Can voted I, to approve. No, 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 wait, no, I'll wait. stop. We'll Can I jump in here for a second? Yeah. This is way misguided, very misguided. I'm sorry. I please, with all due respect, there's been ample information put out to town residents. There have been articles written in the Cape Courier. People have written letters to the editor back and forth on both sides of the issue. 
If people didn't come out to these meetings and get involved, that's their fault, not the process's fault, okay? So with all due respect, what you're saying doesn't make any sense to me. The ordinance was written to restrict residential, as I understand it, and as I've followed it, with interest over all these months. It was written to restrict the ridiculous overuse of residential pesticides on lawns so people could have something that looked like a golf green. It's wasteful, pesticides run off onto abiding properties, it kills non-target organisms, it gets into the water supplies, Pesticides are toxic poisons that are being spread all over the place. If the town wants to go and expand this effort out to include farms, to include the playing fields, etc., they have every right to be able to do that, but that's going to be a longer term process that will probably go months and maybe even years out into the future. It's not going to be a switch that gets flipped on overnight. This was a very common sense, again, as I understand it, effort to uh, start with the most use of toxic chemicals, which is on private homeowners' lawns. The school's not soaking the playing fields with pesticides left and right the way people do with their yards. In my neighborhood, they're pesticides. You would not believe the amount of pesticides that are sprayed. And they're little kids running around everywhere. It's shocking to me that people would put a golf green lawn ahead of the health and safety and well-being of families, kids, and pets that live in these neighborhoods. Okay, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop. I don't think you identified yourself. I'm right? sorry. I, if I didn't, and I just I'm going to stop you. There. You've yeah. made your point. Okay. And I don't think anyone is saying that people want golf greens. Um, That's why wants. most people use pesticides, because they don't want their lawns to have weeds. They want it to look perfect. OK, but this is OK. I'm, I'm John, John Griffith, 3 Blueberry Road. I'm sorry, I forgot to identify myself. All I'm saying is I think this is incredibly from what I can understand, a very common sense and balanced effort to get the ball rolling. There will probably be changes moving forward. And if the town wishes to involve town land, uh, you know, Fort Williams, the parks, the playing fields, the farms, they have every right to do that. This is a starting point. That's okay, all I'm, I'm going to stop you. Yep. I'm going to stop you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm Richard Dick Bryant. I live at 55 Spring Avenue. I indeed was the person who was the primary drafter of this ordinance. Uh, why did you exclude the other properties? I'll tell you why. <laughs> because we recognize that the use of chemicals for cosmetic purposes and residential properties was the primary source of contamination, of pesticide contamination, runoff, etc. Because Frankly, homeowners don't know what they're doing in large part. They see a bug and they spray stuff. Our thinking was that's the biggest part of the problem. It's the part that ought to be addressed first. The issues in dealing with town property are such that we didn't feel that we had expertise enough to be able to balance all those policy considerations to make a logical proposal to apply to town property. Similarly, we know pesticides are needed for commercial agriculture. We had no clue as to how those policy details should be weighed. So that was not included in our initial proposal. We know that the pesticide ordinance had been proposed, I think it was over a decade before to the town and then to the ordinance committee and just died there. We do know that there have since been three dozen or so municipalities, including those neighboring Cape Elizabeth, that have adopted similar pesticide ordinance, which were pretty much a model for this. Um, in the course of the year that the ordinance committee dealt with this, after the petition uh, was, was presented to the town and set for a vote in the fall, during all that summer there were a number of ordinance committee meetings, and we found out an awful lot. One thing which was confirmed to us is that our issue really isn't the commercial pesticide applicators who are licensed by the State Board of Pesticide Control. 
We also found out that, again, playing fields are an important aspect of how pesticides are used, but what we learned during that process is the town has this policy, which was not fully articulated, but as a result of the ordinance committee process, was put in writing and incorporated into this ordinance by reference, and we talked to the public works people and found out that indeed, they have a very um, strongly, I have not sure how they have a, they have a policy which sees synthetic chemical application as the very last choice to be made. They don't have drug problems despite all the fields that they have because they have a very comprehensive manner of, um, of managing the, the turf. They also indicated that, which we heard from the commercial applicators as well, is that there's really a very small window in the grub's life cycle in which pesticides are effective in disrupting that life cycle if you've got a lawn that's a monoculture. So, and once you see grub damage on the soil, it is effectively too late <laughs> to be interrupting the grub cycle, life cycle as it should. So that was how this started out as a pesticide only ordinance. And we encourage the town in those ordinance committee meetings to broaden the scope of it. We'd love to see the town adopt a much wider policy, and we're really glad to see that the town was in effect already implementing that policy for their own turf management. Also, there's something called the right to farm law in Maine, which, to my understanding, restricts the ability of municipalities to do any intensive regulation of pesticide control in commercial agriculture. I don't think the town has the authority to do that. I could be wrong on that, I'm not an expert on it. But that's the reason, that, another reason that agriculture is accepted from the ordinance, which is in effect, which was adopted by a 21% margin by the taxpayers of this town, the voters of this town, when it went to referendum in November. So, with all due respect, the notion of suspending the ordinance that the tax that the voters adopted by such an overwhelming margin and throwing out what I think is an improved product that this ordinance committee has put together um, and suspending that for a year is really backwards policy making. I think that the town voters wanted it. The town ordinance committee has done a really good job modifying it to be more reasonable, to put in things which I fully agree with. Um, and I think the town ordinance committee should just go forward and present it to the town council. And again, you, want, you and other people have an opportunity to, to make your pitch to the town council as to whether this proposal ought to be changed, whether we ought to stay with what we have in the petition. And I'm happy to answer any other questions that anyone has. Um, Debbie Peck, 21 Cottage Farms Road. I just want to say, having worked on this now for a year, I find it incredibly frustrating to have people come out at the 11th hour all of a sudden all worked up because somebody's told them that they can't do any treatment. Um, I'm sorry that people are so out of touch with what's going on in the community. But I think the other piece that I wanted to say is 40 years ago, we did not pour pesticides on our lawns. We accepted grass that included clover and maybe a couple of dandelions and somehow we got onto this path that we have to have lawns that are just grass. I too used, um, actually, ironically, Egbert for several years. And when my children were born, I really had a problem with continuing to put anything on my lawn. And I stopped the service. And I just want to say, because it sounds very like, if we don't get to do this, our lawns are going to be ruined. No. What happens is, it takes about three years for your lawn to find its natural balance again, which nature had created for it. And you will have a lawn that is primarily grass with a little bit of clover, with maybe a, some, a few dandelions. The reason you get grubs is because people are spraying and wiping out everything else that's in the grass to make it a perfect lawn. And when you let nature do the balancing, um, I haven't put anything on my lawn for 30 years, and I would behoove anybody to drive by and say, oh, there's a lawn that doesn't get treated. So, you know, I think we need to think about kind of the bigger picture. Why did this whole phenomenon start? 
And why, why, why do we need to keep doing it? And as I said, we've been working on this for a year now, and there have been long, hard meetings. And so I hope that people do come to the town council. I hope they come with data, because I think we have worked really hard to be very careful not to overstep things, not to have a hysterical response, and to do it based on science and to do it based on current knowledge. And I would hope that we will be able to continue that path. Thank you. Ready? I make a motion that we send this pesticide ordinance along with the town policy, town public works policy, to the town council for review to set a public hearing. I'll second it. Oh, before you go, yeah, you received some suggested edits from the town attorney. Do you want to incorporate those edits? I didn't see. I saw the town attorney mm -hmm. thing, but I didn't see the yeah, edits. I can go through them quickly if you'd like. Yeah. They were very. It's hard to pull them up to see. I know. I was going to say, when did I like check them out before I came? They would have been sent uh, around the end of day on Thursday, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot there. So on the the left is the most current draft that you've seen when you got your package and then on the right is his changes so right here under purpose his change is just to mirror the language that's already in section h-2 okay i don't think it's a substantive change no. so is that an okay on that yeah okay And then this is basically just a note. When you say that this is final, it's still subject to a court challenge. So there's no need to make any edit to this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You, I mean, you know, optimistic, but... Yeah. And it's then, this is just another note that says that whatever you do with the pesticide ordinance, you are required by state law to send it to the Board of Pesticide Review before it becomes effective. Mm -hmm. So there's not really any editing changes. So the only one is that, that paragraph in the purpose. Perfect. Okay. Um, before we vote, um, I just want to point out that, you know, I am new to the town council and, and new to this committee. And um, before starting work on this committee, I did go through um, all of the minutes of all of the meetings regarding this pesticide ordinance. All of them. And it was a lot. And I was pretty impressed with how the ordinance committee that was uh, that was constituted um, last year, I was pretty impressed with all the people that they brought in, uh, the experts that they brought in, that they listened to. Um, it was a very active, it was a very active effort on the part of the ordinance committee to come to this. And so I support this motion to send it to town council. I think that we do want to hear from a broader base of people, and uh, that would happen in the course of a public hearing on this ordinance, um, which would be held in council chambers. Um, I think that by giving uh, adequate uh, public notice about this, that this is coming up for a public hearing, and having uh, attached to the notice a copy of uh, the way it's drafted now without the editorial annotations, um, I think maybe we'll be able to get some very robust uh, public comment. And it would be probably more in the line of um, people who are not experts in this field how it's going to affect them. I like to use the phrase on the ground. Um, 
So I think that would be very helpful. So I, I am supporting this motion. Mm -hmm. And I just point out that currently there's a pesticide ordinance in place. So this going forward only helps at the moment to help the ordinance that's in place currently. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to make a movement to repeal, we need to, you, you can work on that as a parallel track because there's, it's not like you can stop this from going into place, right? I mean, because the, the ordinance is already in place. These are just changes to it. So I guess like, if you want to make a, a campaign to repeal the whole thing, then that's a whole other track other than derailing these changes that will only benefit what's in place right now. So that's how, like, there's two different things going on, and I totally get what you're saying, but I just, I want to move this forward because it's helping what's already in place. Then you can discuss later about just yanking everything if you want to. So I would vote to move it forward. That's yeah, perfect. It's more we have eight minutes left to do this last thing. 30, 30 second comment. Go ahead, 30 seconds. Thank you. I'm going to time you. Because there's a, to be, wonderful, to there's a, a wonderful two page PDF on the pesticide ordinance page of the town website, specifically about grub control and how to effectively manage and target grubs without resorting to toxic poisons on yards. There are ways to deal with grubs, right? That don't involve pesticides. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate the words of that. Thank you very much. I feel really bad that we're all abandoning you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we, we're rocking it right now. Keep going. Keep going. I want to actually I'm going to save this, too. <laughs> we're just going to move to the town. I agree with these changes. Do you agree with these changes? What does Maureen want to point out? I'm going to learn from now on. I'm just going to stop talking until I look at Maureen. Well, <laughs> do you want me to tee this up for you? There's, a, there's something I need to make sure you're aware of. Duh. I like living with the, the per, with the permission of the chair. Yes, go ahead, please. So the draft that you originally sent to the town council is not this draft because there was an evolution, and I can tell you how it got there. You can just believe me. The prohibition on using ADU as a short-term rental is not in this draft, but it can go back in very quickly if that's what you want. Right, that's what it was supposed to be. You're not supposed to be able to use an ADU. Why, why was it taken out of the first draft? Okay, I said we didn't have to go there. It's just that way, but it can go back in. Do you want it to go back in? Yes. There was a conversation, to, or we can just pull tell me to put it back in. I think it should go back in. How do we do that? And, I mean, I, I personally don't, but I think that can. Everybody else is under the impression that it's in there. Well, I was on the housing committee, and there were some very good arguments made in favor of allowing ADUs to be used short -term. for short-term rentals. I agree, too, because it's like a win-win for the whole short-term rental argument that people wanted people to be living in the homes, right? And so people have to be living in their primary home in order to have an ADU. So it's like a win-win for everybody all around. So if you agree and I agree, then we could send it back to the town council without it and then let the town council talk about it. I think it's a... Uh, I think it's very controversial. Oh, definitely. I mean, the, the, point, the, the point that was made in the housing committee is um, that by allowing ADUs for maybe, you know, two years, three years, four a, a certain amount of time, it would it would make it would incentivize the building of ADUs. It would provide uh, a more income to pay down the cost of the ADU. Right. Of the ADU. It's, it's, it is counterintuitive to the housing goals because Correct. if you can create an ADU and make a thousand dollars a week versus thousand dollars a month on rent, then you would go short term. Right, but I think the town, 
and I wasn't around or involved or paying attention. Oh, it was fun. But <laughs> didn't you didn't you have to spend quite a bit of time? Right, but, but the, that's what I'm saying. The argument then was that we went with short term, not allowing short term rentals because they weren't able to be monitored. Right, we were, the problem was people were renting out their houses and not even being there. You know, like the hide the key is in this lock box or whatever, and and there's no oversight of the rental. So I'm saying the ADU kind of allows for that to happen because during those conversations of the short-term rentals, we were allowing people to like rent out, you know, in-suite apartments or or whatever as short-term because people were living there, right? Mm -hmm. Or allowing a, a boarding room, right? Because people were living there. So like an ADU is very similar. You have your primary house and you are there and you're renting it out. So that's why I'm, I'm first, like my, feeling of it would be to put it out there and let people comment on it and then I'm not I'm not opposed to it because I think it kind of helps the people who want to have the short-term rentals but also allows the people who are against short-term rentals to still have the oversight that they originally wanted people to have so it's, it's definitely something worth hearing from people about but if you're totally set on just your housing stock, it doesn't help that. Well, yeah, and that's the other side of it. So that's, I mean, that's why I said you got you, you want to hear from the people. So which is better to hear from the people for putting it in or taking it out? What is going to draw the most public attention? And I think putting it in, because if you take it out, then people might not realize Unless you have a footnote somewhere saying, by the way, you know, this could be used as a short-term rental. Right. Otherwise, people might, it might not come to the sure. forefront of their brain that that's an issue. Move it that way. Put it in. So, I, yeah, I think, I, think it, I think it will make it more likely to be discussed to have it in there. I just, Debbie, I've had 21 kind of terms are, I guess for me, it goes back to why are we really creating ADUs? Why are we trying to right. to create these? And I thought it was the housing. So, for housing, but, you, but now we're talking about making this a short-term rental business, and but it could have that's a, really scary. It, it, it is, but at the same time, you could look at it as you have the purpose of creating an ADU for housing stock, but you also could have the purpose of having an ADU to allow people to stay in their homes. See right? that? So it's both. Like if you want to be a Kate citizen who wants to stay in their, in their home, and you can turn an ADU into short-term rental, which allows you to stay in your home. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm saying they're both there. And, and, and would they have to follow the same guidelines that are currently in place or the same policy that you can only do it for so many weeks a year and or that's all, that's, open that I think mean, that's completely. all to be like that is not even a thought at my moment right now that's what I'm saying we need to hear from people and, and, and look at it I don't want to just say no without having given it any thought and that's why I say you know let's the, hear about it. the reason why this I wanted this amendment going in was because um there were some issues. Um, if you had a if you had a separate structure, you couldn't turn it into an ADU, but you could tear it down and build it. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense, right? So actually, it was it was uh, Ben McDougal that brought these uh, to my attention, and I said, "Yeah, well, let's get let's fix these." And so the short the short term rental is is the issue is very. Uh, there are good arguments on both sides, and I, I think I, I, I would like more information from the public. I'd like to get more public comment. Would you like to comment before you leave? No. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm move that sure we send it back to the town council, including the prohibition of short term rental language. I second it. Well, <laughs> okay. Now, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Did we finish our agenda? Mm -hmm. We yes. have to because I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you again, all. Thank you, you very much. did so well. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, do we have another meeting? April 27th. Okay, we're still running. Oh, that's fine.
making sure. April 22nd. Um, I don't think you can meet on the 22nd. Oh. I think you have to meet on the 29th because the 22nd you already have a budget hearing. 